How the hell can a defective EGR valve cause coolant loss? Surely the dealer is just bullshitting you over that. But maybe not. Details next. I'm John Cadogan from autoexpert.com.au, the place where Australian new car buyers save thousands off their next new cars. Hit me up on the website for that. Hell of a good question today from a dude named Brad who seems to be one of us. Whoever the hell we are. And after that, I'm looking forward to being reamed out by a dead set hottie named Samantha who apparently thinks I'm a Quote, funny, smart, creepy, horny, sexist, bastard, car expert, or some such. That's quite perceptive, I'd suggest, when you think about it. But first, here's Brad. I'm seeking your advice after a friend's new Ford SUV was diagnosed for coolant loss by the Ford dealer. Can a leaking EGR valve cause coolant loss? If so... How and where? Starting at the very beginning of this saga, EGR obviously stands for the Exhaust Gas Recirculation System, a system that pumps exhaust gas back into the inlet of your engine at times in measured doses using a valve controlled by a computer. Diesels do this far more enthusiastically than petrols, but they both do it these days, and I know what you're thinking off the bat, okay? Pumping exhaust back into a perfectly serviceable engine sounds bad. Certainly, it's counterintuitive. I get that. But in fact, doing this actually improves fuel economy and also reduces toxic emissions because, you know, physics. The short version here, the EGR system is water-cooled. It's capturing hot highly energetic exhaust gas from between the exhaust manifold and the turbo and then sending it back to the inlet side of the engine and that heat intrinsically contained in that gas is a gross disadvantage to engine operation. Therefore, water from the engine's cooling system is pumped through the EGR unit in a mini heat exchanger, whence it captures some of this heat before it gets to the EGR valve. And that heat is ultimately rejected in the vehicle's radiator, which is designed to stop, I don't know, some sort of mini automotive Chernobyl. So that's always nice. Take a look. Right up the top of this diagram, this schematic, we've got a turbocharger, okay? The blue side is the inlet side, the compressor there pumps air into the engine, it pressurizes it. You get more air and therefore you can burn more fuel, this adds to the efficiency of the engine. A smaller engine that's turbocharged can therefore do more with less. The orange side is the turbine which is driven by energetic exhaust gas flow. It's a way of doing something useful with heat energy which would otherwise be wasted by the engine. The zigzaggy tube on the left, and I know that's such a big scary technical word, zigzaggy, that is the intercooler, okay? Air gets hot when the turbo compresses it. That's kind of bad in the context of inlet air. So intercoolers are air to air convective cooling systems. It's just like a so-called radiator, even though that's completely the wrong word for the mechanism of heat loss that's doing the actual heavy lifting. The friggin' car industry, right? They could not call a spade a spade if it jumped out of a pack of cards and bit them on the cock, I'm just saying. You know, it's disgraceful. Then you've got your engine, all right? Four cylinders in this schematic, blue for inlet, orange for exhaust. The EGR system taps into the highly energetic exhaust flow just before the turbo. And the actual EGR valve itself, which controls how much exhaust gas gets recirculated, is just there, okay? But the bit we're actually fixated on here is the EGR cooling system, which is right there and does a fairly miraculous job chilling things out in relative terms. It's still pretty warm. I mean, you wouldn't want a holiday there, but it cools it down a lot. Water gets pumped in, and as you may or may not know, water is practically the perfect heat transfer medium. 4.2 kilojoules, which is a substantial amount of heat increases the temperature of one kilo of water by just one degree C. Let's look up water specific heat using Google and find out more. Be prepared to be amazed. So 
if we just spitball this whole heat exchange transfer concept, if you've got about 10 litres a minute of water circulating through the EGR heat exchanger and it goes in at 50 degrees C and it comes out at 100, which is absolutely okay, it is unlikely to boil because the system itself is pressurised and that protects it against that. It's removing about 2 million joules of heat energy every minute from the EGR system. That's amazing. That's like 35 kilowatts of heat rejection, which is rather a lot. A 35 kilowatt radiator would warm up a somewhat large room, even if it's frigging permafrost outside. The point being, a small amount of water can carry away a shit ton of heat energy because water is properly miraculous stuff, which we all take for granted. Unfortunately, the same miraculous property is what kills you quickly if you get rained on in the wilderness and then suddenly it turns cold and windy and you forgot to bring the right clothing. So there's that. If the EGR system develops a leak, water can escape into the recirculating exhaust gas and pass through into the engine and disappear out the exhaust pipe with nary a trace, with virtually no symptoms, except of course for gradual engine coolant loss, which you'll see, the cause of which, however, is difficult to diagnose. The loss, dead easy to identify, just have to open the bonnet, but where it's being lost, not so much. If this happens to you, then the whole EGR body, which is typically one big stainless steel bolt-on thingo, just needs to be changed out. And thankfully, that's a relatively simple job. Now, I am certain that most dealerships will attempt to take you to the ankle-grabbing room in private to make, you know, discussions about the price and so you can negotiate in this undignified position away from prying eyes because time-honoured tradition. And hey, it's what they do even today in the so-called 21st century. But it's really just a new EGR thing out of the box, three or four bolts and a gasket and a couple of water hoses, right? An apprentice could do this and hey, that's probably who'll be doing it. Of course, some disassembly might be required to gain physical access to that area inside the engine bay, but it's not that big a job. Repair bills, never uplifting. My advice there when you're hit with a repair bill such as this, just think about boobies or make representations apropos of the warranty. That always helps. Even if you're a chick, you can think about boobies. I mean, hey, I've seen those movies. Always works. In the case of the On the Fritz EGR, there is a silver lining, okay? Apart from the obvious causes of coolant leaks like hoses that are defective, most other engine coolant leaks are very expensive to fix. You know, blown head gaskets or defective turbochargers because they're often water-cooled too. Or even more expensive, a cracked cylinder head. And I know I don't want one of those. So, given the choice here, I think I'll make mine a defective EGR valve. I mean, you don't get to choose, but if you did and it had to be a mechanical thing as opposed to a hose, I'll make my coolant loss the EGR valve. EGR, yes, it can cause coolant loss. This is a real thing and Brad's dealer is probably not bullshitting him, except perhaps on the price. <laughs> And now this from Samantha. Fair to say she thinks I should be doing some things somewhat differently. You really should take a cold shower before you make these videos. I want to like you and watch your videos. I do, but I don't watch car videos for sexual outlets. Not sure why you mix the two in every single video. You seem funny and smart, but also creepy and horny. In each of your auto videos, I don't get it. Not sure I can watch your vids because of it. There is quite a bit to unpack there, I think you'd agree, but before we do, I'd like to thank my friends at the Royal Australasian Ming Mole Association for their tireless support of this fine channel in 2019. The Mingies, of course, generally relaxing at the beach now, letting it all hang out over the festive season. Upliftingly, enough. Justice.
That was live from Ming Mole Island, just off the Gold Coast in Red Nekistan, yesterday. So, in contextualising this, I'm reminded of these prophetic words from 1983. Oh, mother dear, we're not the fortunate ones. Girls, they just want to have fun. Oh, oh, girls, they just want to have fun. They do. It's hard to argue with. Still true today, girls just want to have fun. Except friggin' feminists and vegans. Can you imagine remastering that excellent song in 2020? Vegans just want to have fun. Or feminists just want to have F-U-N. Can you? Neither can I. Ming moles still want to have fun, pretty clearly. They're on the right track, I think you'd agree. This idea is, of course, not mine. A man could not think that up. It belongs to Cynthia Ann Stephanie Lauper. Just call me Cindy. She's 66 now, incredibly enough, and still having fun. That's obvious. I mean, you can see it in the face, clearly. And once again... Just there, really having fun that time, apparently. That's what F-U-N looks like, I think you'd agree. Time after time, all through the night. She's so unusual, at least, you know, for 66. Cindy Lauper, proud patron of the Royal Australasian Ming Mole Association, or RAMA, where she does excellent inspirational work empowering Mingies to choose F-U-N every day of the week ending in Y. Not too many feminists or vegans, I note, in the Mingi community. And yet, sadly enough, there remains a certain class of highly judgmental modern woman who appears hell-bent on taking a dim view of the fun-loving car accessories professional kind whose only crime, insofar as I can tell, is to enjoy commercial success selling genuine automotive accessories that nobody needs and rust-proofing that doesn't work, to men who, coincidentally, also just want to have fun, mainly by looking at uplifting bolt-on aftermarket accessories, also known as boobies. And I'm not ashamed to admit it, I am one of those men. We're simple folk, we we love boobies, all the different flavours, mainly because they're awesome. They are. Where were we? So thank you very much for your considered feedback, Samantha. I do try to get the balance of funny, smart, creepy, horny car advice, just Goldilocks for people like you. And I do sincerely appreciate your almost constructive criticism. I can only hope that in time you do find as much sexual gratification in watching these car videos as I get out of presenting them. And trust me, when you think about it, that's not creepy at all. Let me know what you think in the comments feed below. The Ming Moles, in or out in 2020, a crucial automotive issue. Let's sort it out now, before the new year. Do they add or detract? I can't tell. I've always just wanted to have fun looking at chicks who just want to have fun. To me, that's just the way it is and how I hope the world will always be.